Hi everybody, my name is Emily and I have actually filmed this video before. Decided I didn't really like what I'd done, so I'm filming again today, but I also washed my sheets today, so now I got no sheets on my bed, but that's okay. Also, I'm sweating profusely. It's like 34 degrees outside. Today though, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the habits that I've developed and some things I'm doing to sort of slow down my life and embrace what's happening now. I just decided enough, I'm done feeling rushed. I'm done feeling like I don't have control over how my days play out. And I just decided, I'm gonna slow down. None of this is brand new information. None of this is like revolutionary. They're all just things that I'm sure you've heard a million times, but that I have applied to myself and I have found work the best. So the first thing, and I kind of started off with this one because it's the first thing I do in my day typically, and that is meditating. Now I've heard it a million times. I can't meditate. I'm not good at meditating. I hate meditating. I overthink when I meditate. And I think a lot of people hear meditating and they think that you have to just sit down and be quiet and have no thoughts. And they are, I guess, correct in a sense. But I think what we forget is that in the same sense that we train our body physically, we also have to train our mind. So you can't expect to sit down in silence and enjoy or feel the f effects of a single meditation session. You have to train your mind into it. And if you have a very overwhelmed mind and you find that you can't sit quiet with your thoughts, then you're gonna have to come up with different ways to do it, whether that be like meditation through yoga or guided meditations, whatever helps your mind come off of the overwhelmed feeling because I do know sitting with your thoughts is not always an option. So it's definitely something that you have to experiment with. I use an app called Insight Timer and it is full of free guided meditations, but it also has the option to just set a timer and meditate. Lately, I have been aiming to meditate twice a day, so a half an hour in the mornings, and then 20 to 30 minutes in the afternoons of guided meditation. I know it sounds like a lot to do, like, I don't have a half an hour when I get home from work. But the fact is I'm either gonna do the meditation or I'm going to have like downtime when I get home from work and I'm gonna pull out my phone. That right there is the time that I use to meditate. And it's kind of like the polar opposite, I guess, of being drawn to something like say your phone because our phones are so chock full of information that it just overruns our minds. Being able to kind of do the opposite after work before I slowly progress into my evening, I have found has just made it feel like I have hours in the evening to be getting things done. I just have found meditating really beneficial and then kind of leading into the next one from meditating would be journaling. These two I find go hand in hand. I like to journal once or twice a day. So I journal in the evenings before bed, but if I wake up and my mind is full, I will journal before I meditate just so that those thoughts aren't running over and over in my mind. Sometimes I'll just do a page of gratitudes or affirmations and those really help put me in a certain zone that I find my meditation following more beneficial. So I highly recommend journaling. It's a great way to just dump your thoughts and you know, brainstorm and daydream and honestly just help keep organized. Sometimes just writing those thoughts out will help take things off your mind. And the more you can unload your mind, the easier slowing down will be through the day. I know I keep saying slowing down. I just mean taking out the things that are consuming you that aren't important and then filling them with things that actually bring you a certain sense of peace. These all kind of tie into each other, but from journaling, I also go one step further and do a lot of planning and goal setting. I do obviously my meal planning and my scheduling and my weekly planning, but the goal planning part is so important just to keep motivated and to keep you on the right track for doing the things you wanna do. So for example, if you're planning on implementing exercise, that's something that you're gonna wanna prioritize when you're doing your goal setting and and then you can incorporate it into your planning because once you have your goals set, you have to break them down into bits and pieces. And so to be able to take that and schedule it in is really important, but you can't do that if you haven't already set your goals. I'm out of breath, holy crap. Another thing that's really helped this last month that I've been able to get back into is keeping a tidy home and I didn't realize how much I missed it. It was to a point where I was like really starting to hate 
our home. And I've just spent this last month that I've been feeling better and had a lot more energy and a lot more time really trying to sort out everything I fell behind on the first few months I was pregnant because I was so sick and I was so exhausted. But I just find that when your house is clean and tidy, your whole world slows down because you're, you don't always feel like you're playing catch up. You're always going to just be kind of one step ahead of the game if you can keep your house tidy. And again, that kind of goes into scheduling and planning and making sure that you prioritize a tidy home. Whatever it may be, there are so many ways to learn to embrace a clean home. And if you guys want a more detailed video on how I went from having a disaster of a home constantly to instead maintaining a tidy home, let me know. I would love to show you guys a little bit about what I did for the planning and everything to get to you know, a maintainable, clean home. This one is so important and that is spending time outside. I often feel like I'm wasting time when I'm outside. We don't have a yard that we do yard work in. Our yard is maintained by the complex we live in. So I don't really have a whole lot I can do outside that's going to be productive. So I've instead started embracing the commute as my outdoor time because then I'm being productive and I'm getting fresh air. There is something so clarifying about being in fresh air for 20 minutes, half an hour, and it clears your mind and it clears your thoughts and it just kind of helps reset you. So I have been using my commute to get in my fresh air and some exercise, some movement. I've been biking to work. It's under 10 minutes each way. So sometimes in the morning, I'll leave a little early and I'll take a detour on the way down. Usually on the way home <laughs> because it's the afternoon. It's too hot to take a long bike ride this I haven't tried yet but I would love to give grounding a try if you guys don't know where that is what that is essentially it's feeling the ground physically beneath you so whether that be taking off your shoes or laying on the ground whatever it is and just like soaking in the earth's energy through your feet science has shown that there is a difference in energy within the earth that is transferred to us when we make direct connection with it so I haven't actually done grounding I mean I walk outside barefoot sometimes I have been thinking about moving my morning meditation outside when it's nice and cool and quiet and calm but anyways if you do grounding let me know in the comments down below and if you've noticed a benefit from it kind of trailing off of I guess being outside is I've started in order to slow down taking the long way or choosing the long options so like my commute to work I've been choosing to bike even though it is quicker to drive it's more convenient especially if I have to run errands but just making the choice like no I'm actually it's less about the commute and more about intentionally setting aside time to be outdoors and enjoy movement and get exercise and that can kind of come in uh, like many different ways I've also found that choosing to go into places instead of using the drive through so like when I go to Starbucks most of the time if I'm I'm not on the road and have somewhere to be I will get out of my vehicle and I will go directly in there's something about connecting with people about being in a place just a moment of your day to kind of reconnect with the world outside you even if you don't speak with anybody except to order you're still making a presence and making something a little more intentional than just a drive-through coffee I know that's not important to everybody and of course you run the risk of running into someone you know and you don't want to talk to but I think embracing those opportunities to be in the world just makes you feel so much better and it makes you feel much more connected every part of your day is such you know a shape and a structure to your whole life so learning how to embrace every single second it's just gonna help you slow down and find those gaps and learn how to use them in a way that's going to make your life feel more fulfilling. Anyways, that's the whole video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've just really been enjoying embracing a much slower lifestyle than I'm used to. Always been super stressed, always had a lot of anxiety, and I have felt these last few months a complete transformation in my mindset and the way that I approach life just by making a conscious effort to slow down, implement habits that I know are going to benefit me, and just work towards a better better mindset and a better lifestyle for the future. I don't know. I just feel like if you're trying something new and it's working, why not share it? So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are practicing slow living or have any good habits that you're trying to implement, comment them down below and let's give each other encouragement. But that is all for me today and I will see you guys next week in a new video.